Oh, this is a beautiful space and a beautiful occasion, isn't it? Um, I'm Lee Herrick, and Andres Montoya was the first poet I met when I moved to Fresno in the 90s. Um, Andres was literally and figuratively larger than life. Um, I'm going to talk a lot more about my friendship with Andres tomorrow on one of the panels that I hope you can attend. But just briefly, I wanted to say a few things about him, um, how much he meant to my life as a poet and, and a person, uh, how I saw the world differently having met Andres. Um, Dan Chacon introduced us. Um, we would talk poetry and politics down at the Review in the Tower District. Um, I published his poem, The Ice Worker Sings, in a little literary magazine I ran at the time. And then by chance, I would had the good fortune of introducing Andres to his fiance. Um, I also want to echo some thanks, if I could. Um, Arte Americas, thank you very much for having us, um, especially to the Montoya family, thank you. Um, to all the people who worked hard to make this happen, it's been a long time in the planning. And um, among just many, but a few I want to mention is Francisco Aragon, Jefferson Beavers, and especially Connie Hales, who um, carried, I think, the lion's share of this work. Yeah, thank you. But I have the real honor of introducing the poet, writer, teacher, cartoonist, activist, and the first Latinx poet laureate in the history of the United States, Juan Felipe Herrera. As most of you know, he's a friend to pretty much everyone he meets, and he's been a friend to me. Uh, if you know of him, and I think everybody does, his list of accomplishments, awards, and publications would take a long time to list but I thought I'd just mention a few for the uninitiated. He's written over 30 books. He's received the National Book Critic Circle Award, a Smithsonian Children's Book of the Year Award, and was a chancellor of the Academy of American Poets. Juan Felipe embodies what is best about poetry and community. His engine is tireless, and his compassion is boundless. Two brief stories that relate to Andres that I think of with Juan Felipe. One was um, when, I, when I moved to Fresno, soon after there was an event for Andres who was sick at the time and in the hospital. And I hadn't met Juan Felipe, but I saw him read and was just mesmerized. And I can still see every minute of that reading in my mind. The other memory I have was I was in the Tower District and I saw Juan Felipe walking up to the ATM machine. And um, a habit that I picked up from Andres, he always said, you have to have poetry with you all the time. So to this day, I, in fact, I was preparing this talk and I, this intro, and I realized that habit is directly Andres. He always had poetry with him. And I saw Juan Felipe walking up to the ATM machine and I had my copy of Notebooks of a Chili Verde Smuggler with me. <laughs> He probably doesn't remember this, but I walked up to him at the ATM and said, will you sign this? And he kind of <laughs> turned around. And, saw and in his typical graceful style, he signed and said some nice things. Um, but mostly, I remember how much Andres used to talk about Juan Felipe with affection and love. So it's, it's really great and an honor to introduce him tonight. Uh, please help us uh, welcome Juan Felipe Herrera. Oh, thank you, Lee. Uh, thank you so much. And thanks, everybody. And let's give a big thank you to Arte Americas and everyone that's here. Thanks for watching. Oh, what a beautiful circle. What a beautiful familia. Uh, knowing each other for so many years. All of us knowing each other for so many years. Uh, all the way from um, 1974 Chicano Park days putting up murals with uh, uh, RCAF and uh, Queso and Jose and um, the VW bomb bombers coming from Sacramento, unloading the pinturas and setting up the scaffolds and uh, getting that bridge uh, painted up and uh, making the community uh, beautiful. 
and bringing so many good things uh, to everyone, to that neighborhood where I, used, where I grew up as a chavalo and hung out in the panaderias. <laughs> and uh, now had, now had uh, murales. And each other, you know, uh, each other. I think everyone here is the same, uh, knowing each other and working with each other and creating uh, a, new, uh, a new sense of being. Uh, you mentioned being a while ago, uh, uh, Dan, and um, also Saul. You know, we're battling for our being. You know, we battle for our history. We battle uh, for who we are. But we really are battling for our, our very own being. Uh, not being pushed back, uh, not being walled down, uh, not being put on border buses, and not being pummeled every day. I've been uh, really feeling a lot of uh, sadness and pain because of all the things that have been taking place and a lot of anger, and I found myself to be quite a crappy guy recently. And Margarita says, hey, man, you're getting really crappy. What's going on? <laughs> and, and I also discovered, I think you already have discovered this, but I, I just discovered this, that they're not, it's not just suffering that's going on. There's also beautiful creativity. And I, I tend to just look to one side, and I kind of get swallowed up and one side of what's taking place, which is all the things that we become aware about and get pummeled by in the media, and how uh, painful it is and how unjust it is uh, to be uh, deported again and again and again in many ways, not just on a bus back to a homeland, to our homelands, but right here without really being deported anywhere deported into invisibility. And so I keep on looking at that. And it takes its toll. And traveling throughout the United States uh, has taken its toll too, uh, seeing our communities uh, suffering. But then again, I was only looking at things uh, one way. And here I'm reminded, and with Andres, Andres is our life, work, and his spirit, and his ongoing spirit, his ongoing creativity, the creativity of Artes Americas, the creativity in this very space, uh, the creativity of artists and organizers and coordinators, year after year after year, gives me hope, gives me um, orientation, gives me light, gives me healing, and uh, opens the doors and breaks down those walls. Walls that I started to build up around myself Imagine that, because I saw so many walls be, being built up around us. So I guess that's the, that's the worst thing that can be done. I've been really busy at doing that. <laughs> so being here tonight uh, reaffirms uh, that bigger world, that bigger sky, not just where there's tempests, but where there's lights and light and stars and you. And that kind of opens everything up now. I kind of feel whole. I kind of feel like an, I can bounce through Logan Avenue. I can bounce across the street and uh, meet people with an open heart and not a uh, suffering heart, not a heart uh, filled with uh, answers that can never be, uh, questions that can never be answered. And you are the answer. And Andres Montoya's work, as, as we've been talking, is uh, one of those big answers. Uh, so that, that's what I've been going through. And I just got back from uh, New Hampshire. <laughs> I think I'm, the, I'm also the first Chicano that has visited New Hampshire. <laughs> and it's been great. It was great to be in New Hampshire. <laughs> it's really, really, really good place. <laughs> it's a really good place. And I felt at home <laughs> because it looks like Fresno. <laughs> because it looks like Fresno, you know. It, it really does. It really does. Uh, it's a, it's it's a very kind space, really kind place, and it has a very large number of migrantes and immigrants, and that's who I went to see. I was in a classroom with around uh, students from 37 nations, 
And uh, it was a good feeling. It was a good feeling. And when I read uh, what they had written, they're learning English, that's what, the, that, that's what it's about. Están aprendiendo español, en inglés, un poquito español. Y uh, I noticed that their poems are very tender. I noticed that they talked about uh, family, they talked about respect, they talked about familia, they talked about what you do when someone visits your house. You can uh, bring out food, you can uh, let them know what there is to eat, you can invite them to the refrigerator. They were really concerned with things in their poetry that you do for visitors in your home. I haven't seen that kind of poem in a long time. Uh, they also introduced themselves in their poetry. Uh, they, they talked about uh, where they come from. And even though they have had terrible and incredible uh, journeys to make it all the way to New Hampshire, uh, they were filled with happiness. They were filled with joy. And for me, that was a puzzle. Because maybe I've been just too locked into uh, writing about uh, the border. And I've, I, I believe in that. But I forgot to look up. And I'm looking up again. So it was very good, a very good experience to go to uh, New Hampshire and uh, meet the people. <laughs> and meet the people, and meet the, the students from Vietnam, from Africa, uh, from Portugal, and Italy, and um, Japan, uh, and China, many, many countries. And I came back uh, very moved by their poetry that really was out of love. And, and Dan, you, you spoke about love, and Andres' uh, love for all, and uh, Saul also. So I began to reflect on, on Andres again, and I remember that he was a big man and with a tender heart. And I, I remember that his lines were short lines, not, you know, on and on and on lines. And I remember that his words were right to it. They, they didn't uh, do a zapatello around everything like I do. <laughs> His poems didn't put mariachi bands in the middle <laughs> and John Coltrane and, and San Diego in 1958 and Muhammad Ali dancing on top of the poems. He, he just was right to it. Um, and, he, and what's most interesting about Andres's poetry too, like him, is that he talks about stars, and he talks about, talks about gunshots. I kind of just stayed in the star side. And he also talks about gunshots. So I think that's what really, um, that's one of his gifts, to talk about what really is going on head on, like he was. Head on, no, no cool whip cream and all that. Just head on and also talk about the stars and also talk about the night and also talk about the sounds of the night and also talk about the people under who sleep under those bridges and who walk at midnight and with nowhere to go, who are the lost. And he found them and he brought them back home in his poetry, and then brought him back to us. And I think that's an incredible gesture. Uh, uh, it takes a lot of uh, wisdom, doesn't it? It takes a lot of wisdom to, to look at the sky, to listen to the wind, to notice the birds. That's a rare thing to do. I mean, a bird that hits your windshield, not that bird. <laughs> not that bird. Not that bird. It's, it's a bird in freedom. A bird in freedom. And not the wind um, that you run from. Not the wind that makes you say, oh, it's too cold, carnal. I need a little cervecita, you know? <laughs> but the wind, as it is, as it is, as it is, almost, it's impossible to notice it. Im near impossible to notice it. 
and yet Andres noticed it. As he noticed the gunshots, and as he noticed those busted, invisibilized human beings crouched under a ball of newspapers at one o'clock in the morning, he could do both. And that's quite, that's quite a feat. So let us say, Que viva Andres Montoya! Que viva! Let us say, Que viva Andres Montoya poetry! Que vivan sus cantos. Que vivan sus cantos. Que viva su palabra. Que viva su memoria. Que viva Andrés. And all the books. And all the murals. And all the songs. And all the syllables. And all the guitarras. And all the vihuelas. And all the murales again. And all the colors. And all the speaking, speaking up. And all the speaking, speaking up. And all the kind of whispering, becoming loud speaking. On the side of a low rider car. <laughs> Curling out of tattoos. Bopping and blowing out of saxophones. Just struggling and struggling and swagging down the street. Cool and slow, high and low, con guitarrón, bajo sexto, and a hip hop synthesizer. Say it like it is, see it like it is, write it like it is, put your heart on it, get your heart going, get your steam rolling, get the community steaming. Get the community steaming. Get the community Make the right menudo. <laughs> Make the right pozole. <laughs> Make that quesadilla as big as you can. <laughs> Unroll that tortilla. Unroll that tortilla. Roll it all the way to San Diego. <laughs> Roll it all the way up to Sacramento. Take it all the way to Nuevo Mexico. Put it on the bridges in San Francisco. You gotta put it on the bridges in San Francisco. Bring that rent down. <laughs> Bring that rent down. <laughs> put it on all those border walls. Because they're not beautiful. So put Andres's poetry there. Melt that border down. You're gonna melt it down with his poetry. If I hear you loud enough, we're gonna melt it down with that with his poetry. If I hear you loud enough, we're going to melt it down with Andres's poetry. If I hear you loud enough, we're going to melt it down with poetry. I think it's beginning to melt. It's beginning to melt. It's melting now. It's melting now. And one thing is happening. And it's happening for sure. Love is happening. Love is happening. Andres's voice is happening. The stars are walking down just a little bit more. They're going to stand in front of you. They're going to spin around. They're going to say, I told you so. It was Andres all the time. He was my friend. He talked to me. He didn't cut me out. He said, little star, I'm here for you. Little star, come on down. We need a star. We need more stars. We need to get the heavens right on the ground. I'm working for you, little star. I'm working for you, little star. Estrellita. Somos amigos. Somos amigos. Somos amigos. Francisco's laughing. <laughs> so, otra mano para Andrés Montoya hoy para siempre. Together, we'll be a song. Let's just say that to each other, nice and easy. Let's say this, okay? We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it like we do it in the teepee, like we do it in the sweat lodge. So everybody turn around and share this phrase from Andres. Together, we'll be a song. 
Right, now do it for real now. Do it for real. <laughs> let's thank the Montoya family. Let's thank Andres. Let's thank, thank all the artistas here, all the coordinators of art and all the directors of art projects. Uh, California Arts Council that uh, uh, opened the doors for me way back in time. Uh, of course, Jose Montoya, a great leader uh, for decades. And uh, all of you who work so hard as teachers and artists and coordinators and directors. And uh, the teachers and Connie Hales once again <coughs> for her great support from day one. And all your familias. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> So, muchas gracias. So next we have, is it you, Francisco? Yeah,